Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Beyond the Frame Live. My name is Dottie San Martin, and we have a very exciting show for you today. We have with us the one and only Beth Stanley, the owner and CEO of Trainertainment and author of People Buy from People, How to Personally Connect in an Impersonal World. Hello, Beth. Hello, hello. I'm delighted to be here, Dottie. You've done such a great job with Beyond the Frame. Well, thank you. I know most people don't need me to introduce you, but I would like the honor of doing so anyway. So all of our viewers today know exactly who Beth Stanley is, just in case they didn't know. Since 1995, Beth has worked on the front line of sales management, consulted facilities across the country, and sold capital equipment in the entertainment industry. Beth has boundless energy, and her focus has always been to create sales made easy through excellent customer service. She's a world-renowned speaker with engagements at Bowl Expo, IAPA, IAPA Europe, IATP, the International Deal Show in Dubai, and Dubai, and is a regular columnist for Replay Magazine as a party professor. Well, Beth, well, I am just so honored to have you uh, sharing the show with me today. It's just really, really nice to have you here. So, you know, I can only imagine when you were writing your book yes. that you absolutely had no idea the new meaning for the word impersonal. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. You know what? I, um, as a matter of fact, it's a, a beautiful place to plug, right? There we go. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I have a rant about virtual uh, engagement, virtual communication, it, a tiny little rant in the book, because I have a concern in today's world that we are that we rely too much on things like email or even text messaging or, or my goodness even you know kind of old school is I left you a voicemail but you never called me back mm -hmm. and and the thing is it's so interesting to me that the virtual way we're together now yeah you're, you're there in your part of Texas and I'm here in my part of Texas but it feels like we're in the same room and um, right. it's, it's so interesting. So I had to kind of walk back my rant just <laughs> a little bit um, because I do think that this is a very viable way to connect. And with that said, I can hardly wait to hug your neck. So I, I really want to be with you in person. <laughs> exactly. And you know that, that really changes. First of all, being in the bowling world, we're very, we're very personal. We're very yes. sociable yes. Uh, in the bowling world. That's just the way we've always been. It's like a family. You hug yes. people, you shake their hands, you give them high fives. And now, you know, we're dealing with masks oh. along those lines. Almost like you're avoiding, like yes. I, in the early part of this, like we're all just figuring out how to live through this, right? But, but I kind of early on, it felt like I was kind of avoiding people at the grocery store and turning away from them instead of turning to them. And I do, I'm like, there's going to be an intentional coming back together. I and, totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. And this is part of it. Like being together. Thank you so much for today. Yeah. No, absolutely. You know, I, I feel like sometimes um, people almost hide behind those masks and, oh. you know, it, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine is that, mm. like you said, you, you almost duck your head. You've got this mask mm -hmm. on, you, you kind of duck your head. And, and that type of behavior is something that we certainly want to discourage, you know, in the entertainment business. Our customers are coming to us to, to enjoy themselves and they're, you know, expecting that personal connection that we used to have with them. And now all of a sudden, you know, people are behind masks. So it, it's, it's, really kind of change the dynamics of people coming into our center and what they see when they get Agreed. there. Agreed. Agreed. So, uh, so let me ask you, what do we have to do to really offset this new norm when it comes to keeping the experience personal? Well, I think we have to be intentional about talking to people. And I think that, um, you know, 
Our ability to provide service and to be with one another is exaggerated or we need to shine a light on it. Like all those things we should have been doing before, we mm -hmm. really need to do them now. Simple things. When people walk into the door, we need to speak to them before they have to speak to us. Um, in bowling, I, I mean, I don't even know if people... Many people know I'm a real bowler, but lots of people don't know I'm a real bowler. Uh -huh. And um, so I just want to go on record to there say that I'm, I'm a real bowler. forever remain in history now. <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm a real bowler. I have a 298 to my name. My highest average I ever book was a 205. So I'm a real, real bowler. But the thing that, the thing that I notice is, and it's from way back in my bowling days, is that uh, the... The customer service folks, so there were a couple of boys that were twins. And if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth market, you know Brent and Eric Robert. And those boys were 16 when I started bowling. And they literally spoke to me every time I came in the building. Miss Stanley, you know, I mean, I wound up bowling with them in later years and watch their baby be born and stuff like that. And so that's what's possible. That's what's available if, if we'll teach our frontline people to really engage. And do we need to engage from six feet away? Yeah, probably. Do you have to engage when you have your mask on? Yes, which means you have to speak up. Yes. But, but yes. you know what? You should have been speaking up, and you should have been speaking clearly anyway. So some of that is just not different. It's just magnified what you got to do. Yes, I, I completely agree. And, you know, the expectations that we have of, of our employees now, they have a, they have a new, they oh. have a new layer of responsibility, yeah. uh, which is kind of interesting. Like you said, something as simple as now, you know, they have to be mindful of the volume that they're speaking yes. because behind a mask, you can't hear them. Uh, what yeah. a bad experience is when, you know, if your customer can't hear what you're saying. Right. So it, it really has, you know, made us be mindful. We need to make sure that we're equipping those frontline workers with the right expectations, you know, mm -hmm. and, and speaking of that, I, I really feel uh, that, you know, we were talking a little bit before we went live about the customer and their expectations and how that has really changed. Um, I think it's really important for us to recognize how this pandemic has changed our customers. Mm -hmm. John, I saw I saw John Taffer do an interview on the AAMA event a couple of weeks ago, and he said that people had to have an emotional reward for making a decision to come to your place. And I oh, thought, oh, I like that. Wow, wow, that is such a big deal. And and again, I want to make the point that I think that's that was always true, mm -hmm. and today it's more true than ever. Fewer people right now. The facts are maybe there's 30% of the people that, that are cool and they don't care. They'll just go anywhere. Um, I would say there are probably 25 or 30% of us who have elderly parents or a husband with cancer or an immune compromised child. And, and we're flat not really going to make a choice to go anywhere right now. Right. Right. And then there's all those other people in between that, that are on the fence. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't think we can survive with the 30% who are just like wheels off. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I don't think we can survive with that. And so somehow we've got to create emotionally rewarding experiences that when, when those people in the middle, and certainly if anybody like me has decided to come on out it's got to be worth it. Yeah. And, and you know what? Isn't that a great thing to get out of this? Because Absolutely. if we really get this now, can you imagine how our businesses are going to be when things get a little more open? That's right. Well, you know, and and I like to try to find the silver lining. And I think that's one of the silver linings in this. You know, we're seeing that to, to provide an over-the-top experience is something that we all are capable of doing. But yeah. to understand, you know, people are coming into our centers a little bit hesitant. They've not quite, you know, decided whether it's okay, not yep. okay. They're, but even more than that, they are strapped for cash. They, yes. you know, they, they've lost their jobs or they've reduced their hours and money is very hard to come by. 
and they're finally getting out. They're finally going to, you know, they've got $50 left this month in their budget and they're finally going <laughs> to, you're going to get it. Yeah. And you're going to yeah. get it, you yeah. know, but I do have some expectations. Please yeah. make it worth my while. Yeah. So I, I think that you are so right when we come out of this and we talked about this a little bit, I am, I am so convinced and it's going to take a lot to convince me otherwise, but I'm so convinced that going through this pandemic and when we come out as an industry, we are going to eventually be stronger than we were oh, ever were before because we've 100%. looked at everything. We've looked at every aspect of our business. Uh, like you said, we've shined a spotlight on it and we found where we can do things better. Yes. And learned how to do those things better. Right. To me that, um, that sets the groundwork for us for a very, uh, very strong future. I agree, Dottie. I agree. I think you're just a hundred percent right. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. You know, I think one of the other things that's been really uh, good and positive is to see how much creativity uh, people are exhibiting. It's people that before were hesitant to do things. They maybe had ideas, but they were just never made that step to do some of these things that they're doing now. And I'm absolutely thrilled that people are taking the, the chance in doing things. What is the most creative thing that you have seen during this pandemic? Oh, wow. Well, um, I can think about it selfishly. Uh, I, I did not understand that we were being creative. I was really just trying to be helpful. Peer talk has been just yes. an amazing situation. You, you've attended mm -hmm. Peer Talk, attended and we it. literally, the funny story behind that is, you know, and you're a marketing genius. I am not. And um, I thought about it in terms of just trying to stay in front of people and trying to help as much as I can. And the first week, um, only about seven or eight people came, and it was okay. The second week, we had about 13 people come, and we got Zoom bombed. Who knew what Zoom bombing was? And, and this was, like, in March. Yeah. And it was terrible. Like, they were nasty and did nasty, bad things and then put pornography on my screen. And, and you know, I just had to say, oh, well, I guess we're going to end now. <laughs> and so it was terrifying. And so in that moment, I thought, Oh, uh, maybe this is a bad idea because that's how we do with marketing, right? If it doesn't work right away, a lot of times entrepreneurs are move on to the next thing, and that's not how marketing works. Mm -hmm. Like you have to keep at it. You, you gotta have to have keep discipline. At it. Yes, yeah. and chip away and, at that rock. Yes, and and so then we did it the next time, the next week, and it was you talk about incredible and creative. The people that came, we probably had forty something people the next week, and then ninety, and then. 120 or something and yes. what happened is that the people that were there had all the best ideas and 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 we called it peer talk because we wanted people to be able to talk to each other and and you know somebody did um really early on did delivery birthday parties and gave them skating passes to use in the future and took you know it took cotton candy and balloons and I don't know, a cake. I can't even remember what they did, but they packaged it up for about $69 and they put them together and you could come pick it up on a Friday from the center. And so they just kept the center in front of their mind and all yeah. kinds of stuff like that happened, Dottie. And those people were so willing to just, to just share with each other and they show up every Wednesday and they're still showing up every Wednesday and, and helping each other. I, to me, that that's incredible. I get emotional sometimes on Wednesday just because I'm overcome with the, yesterday they were all talking about all the things they're going to do on for Halloween and they're going to do pumpkin carving in the parking lot and I mean just just all kinds of things a lot of trunk or treat things are not going to go on in communities because of the spread and the things that are put on the city and so why not do it at your center yeah you know yeah, absolutely yeah. well and and that I think is it's nice to see that you know all these centers have come together and they are so willing to bond and help one another oh learn from things that others have done. Yeah. Again, I think that that 
it's it's really refreshing to see that it, you know in many areas you know you have competitors all around you but to see those people then bond together and really you know we've said all along we're in this together well our our industry have shown that yeah, yeah. um and yeah. and I, I think again that's another one of those things that you know i hope to see that continue long after the pandemic is is gone and everybody's open back up uh, i think that's one of those things that we should uh, continue to do so i think that's the, i think that's something real unique in the in the family entertainment center industry too people who are not in our industry i get to I have the opportunity to work with rookies and newcomers at iapa and uh -huh. and people that are going to start new businesses you know come from the software world or you know people made their money somewhere and now they're going to sure. open a family entertainment center and they cannot believe the willingness and the generosity of people to share and and, and I guess it's just not like that in the rest of the world, you know. And, and that's a sad state. Maybe we'll rub off on them. What do you there think? There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I, I even, I feel that same way too, because I, the, the people that we've had on our show are so grateful to give us their time and, you know, they have other things going on and it's, it's so nice to just, it's that feeling, you know, I, and I, people that know me hear, hear me say this all the time. It's that warm fuzzy that you get. Yeah. I like the fact that I can still get that warm fuzzy. And I think yes. that that's, you know, something that people strive for these days. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you this, the sales process. I know, you know, you have a, a book that has just spelled everything out and it's just, we actually are going to be giving away two of those. So yep. we'll be doing that after the fact. Um, but may have an opportunity a little bit later in the show also to, to get another chance at winning an autographed copy. Beth yes. was so yes. gracious to agree. No, to right here, right here. Right. So uh, you want to make sure that you continue listening. But what? how do you think the new norm looks from a sales standpoint? Do you think it's going to change that process? I don't, I don't think it changes the process, Dottie. I think that... Um, you know, we're real focused with group sales and with birthday sales um, and then certainly sales in general. But I don't think that the sales process changes, you know, very simply um, just laid out. You want to prospect. So you want to find your ideal target market and really, really focus and go out for those folks. And I think that that's one place that it may be more difficult right now because while our ideal client, uh, uh, you know, the holidays are coming and so many people have such big, big group revenue in the fourth quarter. And I think it's going to be more difficult. I'm not sure that those big groups are even going to be a thing. So you may have to have a whole lot of small groups. I think you've got companies who aren't even back to work yet. So they're certainly not going to let them have an offsite event and go somewhere. So, so from a prospecting point of view, you're probably going to have to do a whole lot more prospecting than you ever did before. And I think that'll build your muscle because quite frankly, I don't think we ever did enough prospecting to begin with. I think we relied on people just, you know, open the doors and they will come. So that could really, that could really be one of those silver lining great outcomes. Yes. Connecting people like to buy from their friends. And if you don't invest in the time that it takes to connect with somebody and it's different, for other, I mean, everybody's different. You and I connect very well. We have very similar personality styles. So we love to chat and tell stories. And, and so it's easy for me and you, but somebody who's a little more um, reserved, needs lots of facts, I'm gonna have to connect with them on a different way. Yeah. And I have to be more like them. And so that's a real strength if you can practice connecting based on where people are. And so they're in a funny spot right now. So you may have to listen for a bit about how they're doing and, and those kinds of things. The next thing is to qualify. And I, I don't think that that's ever going to go out of style. I don't think it's out of fashion. People buy stuff because of what they want and need, not because of what you sell. And so yes. you better qualify them and find out what they need and then sell them that. Give them a great presentation, which is the, the fourth step. And then finally, you still got to close. You got to ask people to do something, even in marketing, right? That's a beautiful strategy for mm -hmm. marketing. If we send out a great email campaign, but don't ask people don't to take any that. action. Yeah. Well, we wasted our time. That's exactly so, right. so very long answer. No, I don't think anything changes about the sales process. Cause you know what? I don't think that's just a sales process. 
um, when I train and teach and coach, I go through the same steps. No audience is going to listen to me if I don't try to first connect and qualify with them first. There's no reason to. Uh, it's a relationship process exactly. in, my, in, in my perspective. So. And, and, you know, when you look at it that it, through those eyes, when you look at it as building relationships, it just makes it so much easier. And especially for someone that, that they don't consider themselves a salesman. Yes. Everybody knows how to make a relationship. Everybody yes. Can connect yes. On a personal basis. And for me, that takes some of that fear, you know, out of selling. Yeah. You know, uh, and especially if you have, you know, someone in that position that's that's fairly new to bowling and it can be kind of scary. Yeah. You want me to sell. Oh, man, I don't know. But everybody can understand and relate to making it a relationship. And, and I think that's what's so fantastic about the angle that you take um, for Thank selling. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, may I, may I um, share that? uh this quarter, the audible version of okay. the book is going to be ready. I, I'm saying that. I'm going out on a limb. I finished my part of the reading, um, was coached that I should not do it, but I thought, you know, everybody that's going to buy this book is going to have heard me. And so yes. then I have a distinctive sound. Wouldn't it be weird if somebody it else would was be? Yes. <laughs> so, would so, be. Well, I'm glad you did do it yourself. Uh -huh. I finished up my part of it and it's at the engineer and they're doing all their thing with it. Um, but I finished my part in the studio Tuesday. Uh, my daughter is actually going to read the forward and the, about the author. So we, we do have that left to do tomorrow, but the engineers promise that we think it may be ready for prime time by the end of October. So certainly by the fourth quarter, we'll have the audible book out. So I'm excited. Yeah. Exciting. Well, I can't wait. I have the physical. So now, to, yes. to, you know, that's just awesome. Well, you have been busy. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. No, no uh, rest for Beth. That's no. for sure. It's so, overrated. <laughs> oh, it hit, rest is overrated. <laughs> yeah, there's days I feel that way. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I had mentioned was that we're going to we're going to do um, another giveaway. So I'm going to ask you a question first. Um, and then we will uh, we'll let the viewers know how they can actually win. So oh, what what would you say is the most valuable lesson that you've learned from the pandemic? Mm. Well, gosh. I know there's so it, it, many that sometimes it's it, hard to, to, to pinpoint. I would say that, that it's super important to make the hard decisions sooner than later. Re, re, and and I, from a leadership perspective, I think it's it's been extremely helpful. I, I know how important it is to stay connected and to communicate with the team. And, uh, and so that's been important. And I would say the internal team and the external team, you know, we've worked real hard to stay in touch with our customers, that communication matters, even when everything is disconnected, even when everything is shut down, it, sh it doesn't mean that we should shut it off. Yeah, I, I don't intend to be, I don't intend to be out of business. And so nothing is shut off. We, we didn't, we didn't, we did not have to shut down. We didn't get to do some of the things that you do when you're fully open. Yeah. Uh, but we did, we did not shut everything off. Um, I think that's, I think that's been important. And, and uh, I need to, I need to follow my food plan better. <laughs> Drink well, less let me wine. tell you, that's hard when, when you're not traveling and you're, you're working remotely. I mean, there's a lot more variables in that now. So, but you know, and I, I and this is no joke. I, I've often thought that my challenge with, um, with my, with my weight was because of all the travel. Mm, that doesn't seem to be true. <laughs> So anyway, that's a big learning. That's a personal learning. How's that? So, there you go. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do, we want to give another one of your books away. We okay. had a little contest before 
Um, but what we would like to do is those of you that are watching live today or are going to watch the recording of this, we would like for you to leave a comment. Leave us a comment and tell us the number one thing that you've learned from the pandemic. And the comment that gets the most likes is going to win their very own personal autographed copy ah. of your book. So right. make sure that you leave your comment and Beth will, uh, we will get those books out just as soon as we have declared our winner. So that's right. going to be exciting. Um, well, Beth, do you have any final words of wisdom? I know we're running a little over on our time today. Do you have any final words of wisdom that you'd like to leave our viewers with? Well, I would just say that um, I think it's so important to to love on everyone that you can. <laughs> I know that that just sounds ridiculous, but I don't care what's going on. One of the easiest things to do is to give a smile, uh, even even under a mask. They can see it in they your eyes. They sure can. They can see it in your eyes. Turn, turn toward people. Don't turn away from them. And uh, be intentional about sending somebody a card, uh, Call, calling somebody, just, just love on folks. That probably just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> no, it but, does uh, not. It does not. You know, that, that is something that we really miss. And, and you know, we've realized that there's people now that we're checking on, and they that's that's their lifeline is the communication and, and the hugs. But I know me, for one, I'll be glad when we can get back to, to freely <laughs> hugging people because yeah. that seems to be, you know, here in Texas, that's just something we do. Yes. And when that's not part of our daily routine, it's just like we're a fish out of water. So yeah, I agree. I'll be glad when that gets agree. back. I agree. Well, as we close, I want to say again how much I've enjoyed having you on the show. Oh, thank and you. You you bring so much to this industry and are admired by so many. So oh. uh, I appreciate what you have done during the pandemic and long before and hope to see you continue for many years. Um, and before we leave, I want to just mention to our viewers that we have dropped our second episode of Seeds of Success on Beyond the Frame. So check it out either on our YouTube channel or Beyond the Frame Live. Uh, and next week uh, on Beyond the Frame, we are going to talk about New York and reopening New York. Uh, Jay Nephew will have his guest, um, Scott McLaughlin, and they're going to talk about what it took to make that happen and how that all came to be. And then also, uh, just a quick reminder that we have our 15-minute fix. Uh, we are taking applications. If you've got some problems you need a little bit of help with uh, that can be solved in 15 minutes, uh, give us a shout out, send it to successcoach at cubicaamf.com. We'll get it working on it. And next week, we will be hosting our first 15-minute fix live. Uh, so you won't, won't want to miss that. It's going to be quite exciting. So again, Beth, I want to say thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Uh, and until next time, stay safe, be well, and think beyond the frame. Have a great afternoon, everybody.